Hi, my name is Jen Delaney and I'm a teletherapist out of Boulder, Colorado. Subscribe to my channel for insightful videos or check out my blog at jenniferdelaney.com. I like to say that I'm all about a world evolving towards emotional intelligence and self and co-regulation. So in this book, wonderful book, What Happened to You by Dr. Bruce Perry and Oprah Winfrey, they talk about how our brain is not designed for the modern world. Now, as you can imagine, you can read about it in more detail in the book, but as you can imagine, that creates a lot of anxiety. So one of the ways I want to begin with an exercise that stimulates the vagus nerve, which is a long wandering nerve from the brain to the gut. And when you stimulate it, it brings on board the calming part of the nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. So when we have good vagal tone, it means that we can respond to things a little more regulated. So doing these exercises actually have a physiological benefit. So this one's called the Valsalva Maneuver, which is a fancy name for something very simple. And that is that you're going to plug your nose and go ahead and you know exhale against that as though you're popping your ears you don't want to do it too hard but it's just like you're popping your ears at the same time you're bearing down like you're having a baby or for men I say like you're taking a big poop <laughs> so you're gonna bear down at the same time and we're gonna do this five times so let's start with the first one so nice inhale <sighs> Take a little break, exhale, inhale. Let's do that three more times. Two more times. And last time. Now notice your body. So it is actually a physiological override for anxiety and it slows the heart a little bit. And so it works not just in a mindfulness way, but also physiologically. So anxiety is like a tangled necklace of emotions. And if you have ever tried to untangle a big pile of necklaces in a jewelry box or maybe a bunch of ear, ear pod cords, <laughs> you know what I mean. So when we can tune in to the various emotions, it's usually a lot of emotions that have added up and we get overwhelmed, we get anxious. And actually when anxiety peaks out, our body gets tired of it and it moves into depression. So when we can tune in with, let's just say the very top layer of anxiety. So you might wanna close your eyes and see what's going on in the body. How does anxiety manifest for you? And that might be your heart rate is a little elevated or, you might be breathing a little more quickly. So just tuning in to how that, what that looks like for you. Your stomach might hurt. So take a moment, close your eyes, notice your body. And tune into what that top emotional layer is. That could be different for everybody. You know, generally there's a lot going on. We might be angry at a boss and frustrated uh, with a partner and, and um, saddened by something going on with the kids and also the world situation, you know, there's, there's a lot of emotion happening all the time and we tend to check out. And so then it turns into anxiety that's coming up. So let's just imagine that the top layer is that one of your, your kids is struggling with school. And maybe you've taken the action for them. You've gotten an IEP program. The teachers are aware, but our hearts are connected to our kids. So you want to tune into that top layer, whatever it is for you. I'm using this as an example. And I know that when my children struggle, I feel it in my heart. So what I would do is take a nice deep breath into the heart. So inhaling and exhaling five is a really, and, and always exhaling actually out the nose with this exercise. So let's try it. Inhale five. And exhale five. Let's do it one more time. 
exhaling. Just that acknowledgement of what's happening in the body creates a little bit of a release. So this leads me to another exercise. And this one is, um, I'm trying to think of the book's name. It's from Language of Emotions, What Your Feelings Are Trying to Tell You by Carla McLaren. And she has this exercise called Conscious Complaining. So you want to do this somewhere where it's very private. I go into the car in the garage and do it. <laughs> but you can, you know, find a space where you can just allow yourself to be uncensored for five or ten minutes. Just, you know, we call it complaining, but just let yourself vent a little bit. You know, without the, the adult mind coming in and going, well, but on the other hand, you should be grateful. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a wonderful thing. We want to follow up with that later and be grateful and, and see the good in our lives. But also, we want to be tuning into what's getting to us. Otherwise, we're going to have anxiety and not know where it's coming from and end up taking a medication. And, you know, it, it's better to deal with it if you can holistically and really be tuning in to what's happening in the body. What are the different layers? If you have time, go beneath that first layer to the second layer. Find a metaphor for it. Sometimes there can be a metaphor, like I, I feel like I'm running endlessly on a, on a treadmill that won't turn off and, and no one will let me off. I'm chained to it, you know? Let your body feel what that feels like and then breathe into it. Find some compassion for yourself in this difficult world with these difficult circumstances that we sometimes find ourselves under. So conscious complaining is a wonderful way to allow yourself to vent, which can help you tune into the layers. You know, what are we angry about? What are we frustrated by? What are we really grieving? All change, you know, any kind of change, even if it's a good change, requires a little bit of grief for what we're letting go of. So if we can become emotionally intelligent, so emotional intelligence isn't just about tuning into our emotions. It's also seeing ourselves from the outside and others from the inside. But the only way we can really start to see others from the inside is to develop an empathy for our own experience that's going on in our body, not just our mind, but what's happening in the body. So hopefully this has been a video that will be helpful to you as you move forward and overcome your anxiety, as you befriend your anxiety so that it's no longer overwhelming you. Take good care.